In this tutorial, we're going to show how to use the uh, binning menu in DS9 to make uh, 3D data cubes, and then what you can do with data cubes. Um, so we've preloaded an event file, um, and we've made the image size a little bit smaller with the 512 by 512, um, and we're going to the uh, binning parameters. Uh, we've seen the X and Y and all those things, but we haven't yet explored the uh, third column, the binning the third column. Um, basically you can go through here and select any column that you want to bin on third column. Uh, we're going to select energy. Um, minimum of zero, maximum, we're going to set this to be 10,000 since the maximum Chandra uh, energy range is 1 to, you know, 0 to 10k. Um, we're going to make 10 bins and a new menu has popped up, the data cube menu, um, which now has 9 <laughs> nine slices. Uh, it's kind of an n minus one thing. Um, I'm going to set the scale to global. Um, what that does is any mins and maxes and color bar changes happens to every slice and through the data cube. Um, and then we smooth it a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see here on the screen. Um, you can use the uh, you know, the next and the previous kind of like a you know, an audio play recorder kind of thing, and step your way through essentially a movie of the data. Um, since we've been on energy, um, what you're seeing are, you know, uh, sources that are uh, very soft to very hard. As we're here at the highest energy now, um, this is a very, very hard source, and um, you're, what you're actually seeing is pile up. Um, you can set the uh, player to play it automatically and loop through it. Um, and you can kind of see the uh, uh, see the change in energy as a function of time. Or, sorry, change, of change in intensity as a function of energy. Um, we can change this to use time um, and actually then look at a movie through time as opposed to through energy. And I'm going to highlight a couple of regions um, that you should keep an eye on. Um, and now if I do the same thing and step through, uh, you'll notice that uh, the top source here is uh, starting to dim already. Uh, there's a source that's appeared in the, that aperture. Um, and now there's one down in this aperture. you also notice that the one beside it uh, is also brightening during that time during that last frame or two. Um, again, we can play this, and the brightening is uh, pretty apparent. Um, you can do more than just uh, display the frames. You can actually do some analysis tasks with them. Uh, so I'm going to uh, select a uh, special kind of region. Uh, this is new in uh, DS982, which is the uh, Circle 3D region. Um, and what this lets you do is um, draw a circle, and it will then show you the third dimension um, for all the pixel values in that circle um, in a graph. Uh, so I'm going to pretty it up here a little bit, um, make it a little smaller so we can see the whole thing. Uh, now, whenever I drag the circle around, um, you're now seeing essentially uh, a light curve. Since we've been in three dimension, this is a, a quick and dirty light curve uh, for every, you know, every point in, in the image. Uh, this is the source that was flaring. Um, and if I move it over here, we can see one of the sources that flared at the beginning of the observation. So without, you know, without much effort, we've uh, been able to make light curves for every pixel in the image, essentially. Uh, we can do the same thing with spectra, and I've very quickly there changed it to energy. <laughs> um, and uh, we can do the same thing. So now our third dimension is energy. So each of these uh, uh, plots that we're now seeing are very, very, very coarse uh, spectra.
And again, as you drag it around, the uh, you can see the spectral uh, the spectrum change.